Today's econ line lesson is on total surplus. So I've just got a graph up here that represents what we've done in previous lessons with producer and consumer surplus. Now I've just got them both on the same graph. So quick review. Recall that consumer surplus is the difference between the demand curve and the price. So we would say that buyers minus the price. And producer surplus is the difference between you know, the price minus the cost to the seller. So we would call it, again, price minus cost. Together, that amount is called total surplus. But there are a few different things that we need to see in this graph in order to understand how it works and its relationship to the market system overall. So one of the statements that we can make as we look at this particular chart is, let's just look at the points on the graph at various quantities. So what we see at a very low quantity in this case, and we're going to ignore the price for a moment, is that we have a very high value to the buyers and a very low cost to the sellers. So we're saying that, in other words, society or the market places a very high value on this item, and it's very inexpensive for the producers to make at this quantity. So what do you find happens? You know, obviously, there's going to be an incentive for people to enter the market, and people enter the market and start producing that item. And it makes sense to do that, right? Is that for a society or for a market, it makes sense. We're starting this concept now called social efficiency. And what I mean by that is how well markets produce for society, social efficiency. So when we come back to this concept here and we see, you know, it is so, we would say it is socially efficient. It makes sense for society that an item with such a high value and such a low cost be produced. The same is true with every other item as we work our way to higher qualities or quantities. At each of these points, the value to the buyer is much greater than the cost to the sellers. So again, should that unit be produced? Well, from an economic perspective, yes, the value exceeds the cost. In fact, for all of these units, the value exceeds the cost, and therefore, it is sensible to produce the item. So we would say that in a market system, all of the surplus is captured. In other words, all of the items that it is beneficial for society to produce are produced, and that's what total surplus is, and that's what markets do. They maximize total surplus. They maximize the amount of benefit created for society overall. But this brings us into this efficiency and fairness issue that oftentimes comes up in economics, which is a matter of, well, who ought to get now, I just say here that this is a normative question. Very often, our tendency is to, to, to like lean towards the consumer side because that's where we have the most experience in life. You know, we go to the store, we feel exploited when the price is really high, and it didn't really cost the, you know, the, the seller much to get that item or much to produce it. Uh, that usually upsets people. Incidentally, when we talk about exploitation in an economic sense, that's typically what people are getting at, too. Now, there's no hard line for this, but in general, we would say that when somebody, somebody is exploiting somebody else, when they're selling something for a very high price when it was very, very inexpensive for them to produce it. Or vice versa, when somebody is willing to pay a very, very high price, but they manage to pay a very, very low price, uh, you know, almost to an unfair level, it's usually when we start calling it unfair when too much of the surplus or too much of the benefit is going to one party. But the concept of too much is, again, normative. So, all we can say as economists is that total surplus is maximized by, by the market quantity, the equilibrium price and quantity, and that's ideal. Now, who should get the surplus is up for people to argue about. But ultimately, there really is no reason why one side should get it over the other. I mean, think about all the times in our capacity as consumers, we go into a store and we expect to pay, again, say, $100 for an item. You arrive at the store and it turns out that that same item is on sale for $50. You know, you don't feel guilty about that and run to the cash register and insist on paying at least 70 you know, or anything like that. So the same thing happens on the opposite side of the equation for producers as well. Sometimes they are able to get a high price in the market because that's what people are willing to pay. Like, why are they able to charge you so much when it costs them so little to produce? Because somebody else is out there willing to buy that item for that price. That's why. And if nobody else were, then the price would start to fall. So we get into this concept of producer and consumer surplus as economists. It's very easy to get off the um, positive economics path and down the normative economics path as to what's right and wrong. You know, a course like this, 
and we largely try to stay away from that. And we just mostly, well, I should say, for the initial part of the, the discussion, we try to stay away from that and save those debates for a more advanced time. Um, here, we want to look at the basic premise of social efficiency and just say that social efficiency is when total surplus is maximized. Total surplus being producer plus consumer surplus. Uh, another thing that we want to look at, too, total surplus equals consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Then we can kind of simplify this algebraically. If you remember our formula, that consumer surplus was value to the buyers minus the price, and producer surplus was the price minus the cost. In this equation, we can cancel out the price, and really, we just are saying, as I've said a few times just directly, value to the buyers minus the cost to the sellers. So in other words, total surplus is saying value to the buyers minus cost at each point. And that's where we get the from.